Welcome to ULI's fall meeting. Let me thank again two men who I respect greatly and who also happen to be our host committee co-chairs, Bob Lowe and Wayne Rakovich. Their leadership is the singular reason you and your committee made this meeting as remarkable and as unique as this great city of Los Angeles. And it's on that subject of leadership I want to talk about today. Each of you as a ULI member is a de facto industry leader. You are providing our communities access to the responsible land use that we need. And in this ever urbanizing world, that need only grows. If you add that to the realities of the natural and man-made disasters, like the recent hurricanes, the horrific fires here on the West Coast, the earthquake in Mexico, and the man-made tragedy in Los Angeles, I'm sorry, in Las Vegas, our role only expands. Resilience is not just preparing for disaster. It's creating new opportunities, opportunities that contribute to lasting prosperity, economic development, jobs, education, livability. So here's the thing. In this urbanizing world, development is inevitable. Bad development is not. Right after Hurricane Harvey, the New York Times ran a piece, and it was entitled, Why Can't Cities Get It Right? It questions development's role in Houston's flooding. And then more pieces came out, and it talked about the vulnerabilities in our cities. My message today is simply this. We are getting cities right, but we must do more. We need to take ULI's examples, and we need to replicate them, and we need to replicate them everywhere. For example, you can see on the screen, last month ULI held a housing opportunity conference in New Orleans. It featured tours of mixed income, mixed use developments, and they were all built following Katrina. What you see on this screen are examples of not just building for resilience, not just an environmental standpoint, but it is building for a better quality of life. Another example is Buffalo Bayou Park in Houston. This is one of our awards for excellence finalists. This park is a popular open space in Houston, and it was built on the premise it could withstand frequent flooding. Harvey inundated it but it did not ruin it. And then I want to do a shout out for Stonebrook Estates. It's a residential community outside of Houston, and it held up so well that the community's residents sent the developer, Terra Visions, a thank you note after the storm. And we can see ULI's leadership and resilience in all of these numbers on our green print members. And we see it in the work of hundreds of ULI advisory services panels They've helped communities rethink complicated land use issues, directly or indirectly related to resilience. This type of future-based development and meaningful and measurable advisory work is what we as ULI members do, and we must keep doing it. When Jeremy Newsom was ULI's global chair, we were in a recession, and the world of real estate as we knew it had changed dramatically. I remember a comment that he made at this very fall meeting segment. He said, and I quote, in these trying times, ULI members need to be the industry stewards. The times are different now, but ULI's work has never been more necessary or relevant. Today, I'm asking you, like I said in this urban land piece six years ago, to remember three things. You are the industry stewards. You can and you must be part of the solutions to our urban growth challenges. Secondly, I'm asking if you have the time, help your district council, volunteer for ULI, give to the ULI Foundation, help shape the direction of our organization, our cities, and our regions. And finally, never forget that each example we set, each problem we solve, we're making progress in getting our cities right. Our work will never be done. We can, as ULI members, do more, and we must do more.